I'm Dan Lair with Candro, and we're here to talk about a showdown between the M3T and the M30T. Now in today's video, we're gonna talk about a few different things, uh, some specs, we're gonna talk about the portability, the deployability, the cameras, the flight times, the battery, even some of the controller usability. So we'll give you guys a very thorough rundown on some of the similarities and the differences. Now you're probably wondering why we've got a box over here and a drone over here. And just to let you guys know, there is an actual M30T in this box. I just couldn't get a unit in our hands because this one's for sale. We have one actually being used in the field right now, but we really want to get this video out for you guys so you can understand the differences between the M30T and the M3T. So the first similarity between these two different drones is the portability and deployability. Both of these drones come in hard cases, so they're very, very easily transportable. But the most important thing about that is they both can be set up within one minute uh, from unboxing right to the flight time. What's really important about both of these drones as well, they, they have a 360 degree obstacle avoidance collision sensor. So they both will be up in the air and they will not ram into objects. However, you do have to be very cautious around stuff like power lines or like thin little wires or even tree branches as sometimes the obstacle avoidance doesn't quite pick those things up. Both of these drones offer split screen visibility of both the thermal camera and the RGB camera. So when you're running missions, you can look at one side being thermal image and the other side being the RGB image. If you're in search and rescue, you love that because you can see both thermal and RGB optical. If you're doing inspections, you also get a very, very good visual of the thermal footprint and also the RGB footprint. Both the M30T and the M3T have RTK, which stands for real-time kinematics. That's really important if you wanna do any you know, accurate survey type missions. Uh, one important difference though, is that the M30T comes with the RTK module built into it versus the M3T where there's a separate RTK module that mounts on top of the drone. The flight time on both the M3T and the M30T vary very, very slightly. The M3T is rated for 45 minutes of flight time. The M30T is rated about 41 minutes of flight time, but real world scenarios and characteristics probably bring you in the range of 38 to 40 minutes on both drones. What's really interesting though, is the M30T is hot swappable. So there's two batteries and you can leave the drone powered on as you swap in, in and out both batteries. The M3T needs to be powered down for each battery change. Now, the reason you're probably considering the M30T and the M3T is for its thermal capabilities. And what's really interesting to note is that both the M30T and the M3T share the same 640 by 512 resolution thermal camera. It's exactly the same camera that's actually on the H20T payload. Now, if you're talking about price and you want to know the difference between all three of these different units, the M30T is a standalone drone with, with a thermal camera that comes in around $15,000 Canadian. The M3T is about half of that, but the H20T payload, you're looking about a couple thousand dollars less than the M30T itself, just for that one payload that goes on the M300. Now let's talk about the major differences with the M30T and the M3T. Um, one of them is the zoom capabilities. The M30T has a 16 times optical zoom and a 200 times hybrid zoom. So you can get really close into seeing things like nuts and bolts or people on the ground or anything from a very, very, very far distance. Whereas the M3T has a 56 times hybrid zoom. That means you gotta get a lot closer to the subject that you're shooting at just for that zoom level. Another difference between the two different models is that the M30T contains a laser rangefinder. The M3T does not have a laser rangefinder. Why is this important? Well, it's really neat because you can point your, your drone basically at something and that laser rangefinder will tell you the GPS coordinates and how far away you are from something. So if you have a target on the ground, you can measure the distance of, of what that target is. Or if you're looking at say a transmission pole, you can see how far away you are from that transmission pole. With the M3T, you do not have the option of a laser rangefinder whatsoever on this unit. The M30T comes with a 48 megapixel camera sensor and the M3T comes with a 12 megapixel camera sensor. That means you get a much higher resolution with the M30T, you get much higher GSD, ground sampling distance, so you can be further away from what you're shooting at, whereas the M3T, you've gotta be a lot closer to your subject of what you're taking pictures of. Both units come with a DJI Smart Controller, however, the M30T comes with a Smart Controller Plus, and that is a beast of a controller. You would actually wanna get a lanyard to hang that off your neck to hold onto. Much bigger screen size, uh, fewer or less buttons than the M3T has. M3T's got a lot more buttons, uh, but you get a lot greater visibility on the controller of the M30T. Now, what's really important about the controller specifications is that you can actually use a second controller with the M30T, which you cannot do with the M3T. And why this is important? 
Well, if you want to do a visual handoff or if you've got a mission that's got long corridors and you've got a secondary beyond visual line of sight person with a secondary controller, you can pass that controller onto them and they can continue the mission down that corridor. It's also really important um, because you can have two pilots flying the M30T, whereas you cannot have that feature on the M3T. With the M30T FPV camera, one pilot can fly with his controller using the FPV and the other pilot with a second controller can see off the thermal cameras or the you know, RGB cameras or even the zoom cameras. And so they can basically turn the gimbal around and look at certain things. Let's talk about one important use case in the actual DJI pilot app between both different models. The M30T contains tracking and the M3T does not contain tracking. So what that essentially means is you can put up the M30T up in the sky and you can lock onto a, a, an actual target that's moving and it will follow, uh, well, the drone won't move, but the camera gimbal will follow that target. Uh, which is called tracking mode. And the M3T does not contain that mode whatsoever. The M30T is rated for IP55, which basically means it can be rained on, you can fly in the dust, it's got full protection from any kind of moisture, leakage. I mean, I don't advise you flying it in the rain. However, you have that added benefit protection, peace of mind with the M30T. Whereas the M3T does not have any IP rating whatsoever. You do not want to get this bird wet at all. I'm Dan Lair with Candrone. I've been really happy to present the fundamental differences between the M30T and the M3T. If you like this video, subscribe to our channel or reach out to us on candron.com. We'll be happy to answer all your questions.